In a few days, the President of the United States will deliver his annual State of the Union address. In all likelihood, he won't even mention the most important union in the country and uh, the one that great, most greatly affects the condition of the country, the condition of our churches, the condition of our homes, and the condition of the society in general. David and I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the state of the marriage union and a few things you can do to strengthen, preserve, and enjoy the most important and fulfilling relationship. Marriage is the foundation of civilization. Of course, the essential foundation of a happy marriage is love. Young people with their starry eyes, starry eyes uh, love uh, often will say or think, what could possibly go wrong? And yet, love being the essential of uh, a happy marriage, why are there so many marriages that are total disasters and uh, fail so miserably? Or why are so many people not entering into marriage at all? We believe it's because love is so often misunderstood. Most people do not seem to understand what ingredients are in, included in true love. First, love has to be a commitment. Several years ago, I wrote a song named Love is a Choice. People tend to think that love is something that happens to you. Or love is something that you're just going through life and all of a sudden you fall into love. In reality, love is a choice. And love has to be a commitment to keep making that same choice no matter what happens. I read the story of a woman who complained to her husband and said, Seems like you never tell me you love me anymore. And he said, Why, honey, when I married you, I told you that I loved you. And if anything changed, I would let you know. As strange as that seems, there seems to be people who are really that naive when it comes to love and marriage, and um, their marriages, of course, are not very fulfilling. Love has to include trust. We know of people who look at each other's phones or they, or they lock their own phones from the others, and also people that send spies to the workplace of their spouse to check and see what they're doing. And if you are trustworthy, you will be trusted. Your spouse should know that you are 100% faithful to your marriage vows, and they can trust you. One of the next essential ingredients is togetherness. We know that you cannot be together at all times and every day, but we see so many couples drifting apart until their marriages fall apart. It is important to spend time together. Don't fall into the false illusion that quantity time is not important, that only quality time is important. Dr. James Dobson pointed out that we do not accept or apply this type of reasoning in any other area of life. So go on dates together, set a time, reserve special days or weekends, walk and talk together. We used to call them walkie-talkies. Walkie and get your picture taken together. Um, Use them on Facebook and other social media because it will help you and others to see you as a couple instead of just as individuals. Don't forget about touch and affection. It seems like when Crystal and I are within an arm's length of each other, we will soon be touching. Often just walking through the house, we meet, we embrace, and begin kissing. I realize this can't be as spontaneous in a home where you've got children tugging at you from every direction, but be sure to take plenty of time for affection. It's also important to be thoughtful about the needs and preferences of each other. Giving gifts and it, not big and expensive gifts necessarily, but showing that you're thinking about that other person. And recently we were on a trip and it was quite a long trip, and on Valentine's Day, David wanted to give me something special, and he knows that I like roses. So um, I picked out this little thing, and it says, My darling wife, you are the love of my life. And um, I was thrilled to get that and to have it and to put it in my cupboard with my other knickknacks and things so I can look at it and remember. And also, then when we got back to West Virginia, I... Um, fixed him carrot cake that I wasn't able to fix on his birthday when we were down south to show him 
how much I love him and because I know he loves carrot cake. So in the, in the book on um, Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, you can see many more ways to show each other your love. After our children were out of our house and we were uh, had the empty nest syndrome, you might say, uh, one day Crystal said to me, I would like to have a dishwasher. And I said, okay, we'll get one. So we got one and we hooked it up and uh, got it in operation. And there's been nothing in my life that has earned me more praise and more gra gratitude than that dishwasher. Take time to play and work together. We recently read a story of a couple who had been married for 86 years. They said that the key to that long marriage was togetherness. They had purposely become interested in the interests of the other one and had won many awards through the years for their dancing and for their shooting. They had purposely developed interest in the things that the other one was interested in. So get interested. Work together. This video is actually being recorded in our master bedroom, which we built together over the past two years. It's not fully completed, but we have learned a lot and it's so rewarding to achieve major things together. It's also vitally important to worship together. God created mankind for a relationship with Him. And as we grow closer to God, we also grow closer to one another. Your personal devotional time helps you to become the kind of husband or wife that you should be. We also need to worship together as a couple or with your children. It is important to attend church together. Crystal and I met at a church-sponsored camp meeting, and so a lot of our dating was in church or church-related uh, activities. We also had devotions together as a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we were good for each other's spiritual growth. And I feel we continue to be. We still share spiritual truths together and we talk about different things that we have just read in our Bibles or other good resources. We have read many good couples devotional books and also the Bible is the most important. Positive instruction like this implies the negative side. Some, uh, there are some things you just want to be careful not to do. Satan is trying to crowd out togetherness and crowd out trust from your marriage and your life. But God's word says, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And yet many couples believe that they have to have out of state jobs and go away for different situations and to different directions, or they separate for education or ministry. Unless you're in serious danger, don't accept any excuses for separation. In the Old Testament, a newly married man could serve in the military uh, in time of war only after spending a year at home to cheer up his new wife. Uh, most modern love uh, movies are not geared toward a biblical concept of marriage, and they promote many warped priorities regarding life and relationships. The devil wants you to believe that there is some chance of a lifetime, or this is the big opportunity for your career. Actually, these big breaks are often the very thing that totally breaks down a marriage. Don't fall for these fake opportunities. But rather, build your life and your marriage on love, trust, togetherness, faithfulness, and walking closely together in the light and love of God. A happy, lasting, fulfilled marriage will require some effort, commitment, and hard work. But there is absolutely nothing else in life that has such potential for joy, fulfillment, pleasure, and satisfaction. What is the state of the union in your marriage? I wonder if our viewers saw you playing footsie with me while we were doing this. <laughs> Does it matter? No, nope, doesn't matter to me. <laughs>